Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about sandboxing applications using SystemD. So sandboxing is a computer security technique that focuses on isolating a program from parts of a system that it does not need to interact with during normal operation. When a new program is started, it has all the abilities of the user that it runs as. These abilities are often much more than the program needs to perform its function. This can lead to security issues when a bad actor manipulates the program to access some of its unused abilities or to do something the program would normally not be able to do. So the purpose of sandboxing is to identify exactly what the abilities the resource or the program needs and then back off everything else. So the aim of this tutorial is not to create the strictest sandbox environment possible, but rather to use the recommended and easily enabled settings in SystemD to make your system more secure. Most of the options that we'll be using in SystemD today are pretty self-explanatory, but if you do have any questions about them, I would direct you to the man page. So the way you find it is you'll type in man systemd.exec, and then you'll want to jump down to the sandbox section. And once you get to the sandbox section, you'll be able to see all of the options that we'll be using today, and plus a lot more. So in our demonstration, we're going to be sandboxing engine X. And I'm going to walk you through all of the troubleshooting steps that you'll need to go through to sandbox other applications. So this might take a moment, but hopefully once you see it, you'll be able to do it yourself on any other application. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the actual um, system file, the unit file in systemd. So we're going to sudo uh, systemctl, and we're going to cat out nginx. And we can take a look at it. And here we can see um, all of the options that are already enabled on it, wanted by after network.target. And we have one override file, but there's nothing in it. And that override file is actually how we're going to put our changes in. So next, we need to get a little more information about Nginx. So we can see what user it's running as. We use the ps um, command. And then we're going to give it the options AUX. We're going to pass it into grep. And we're going to take a look for uh, Nginx. And we can see here that the master process is running as root. And we can see that it has two worker processes here that are running as the www-data user. And this root right here is one of the issues that we want to try to remove. Because like I said earlier, it runs with all the privileges of that user. So right now, the master process can do anything the root user can do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stop the uh, Nginx service. And now we can go in and we can edit it. So we're going to sudo. And here under service, we're going to put in user equals www hyphen uh, data. And we're going to put in group equals www hyphen data. And then we're going to save it. And then we're going to restart the service. And we see that we got an error. So we're going to take a look at that error with the journal CTL command. So we're going to sudo journal CTL. We're going to do f to follow u so we only see that unit file. And if we look right here, we can see that we weren't able to write to the run nginx.pid um, file because it's permission denied. So we're going to have to take care of that error. So we're going to go back in. And we are going to add the runtime directory. And then we're going to call it nginx. And then we're going to save it. But we can't just do that. We have to we have to tell Nginx where to write its PID now. So we need to sudo and do v etsy nginx nginx.conf. And then we're going to look for the PID. Uh, looks like I'm here. And then it's going to be run uh, nginx and then hyphen. Because the runtime directory already knows that it's going to be in slash run. So when we gave it engine X, 
uh, that's what this is. So we're telling it to be under run, run nginx, and then nginx.pid. So let's go ahead and save that. We're going to right quit out of here, and then we're going to try and start it again. And there's another error. So let's go ahead and take a look in the log and see what we find. All right, so this time it's telling us it failed to bind to the port on port 80. And that's because it needs to be root in order to bind to port 80. Except it doesn't need to be root. We can give it the capability to bind to those lower ports, to so the ports that are below 1024. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll quit out of here. And we're going to go back in to our edit. And this time we're going to give it the ambient capabilities, and then we're going to give it the capability to bind to those lower ports. So we're going to use the uh, option ambient capabilities. And this is going to be equal to cap net bind service. And then we're going to save it. Let's go ahead and try and start it again, see if we get any more errors. And the service isn't starting, so let's go ahead and kill it and then take a look at the journal again and see what's going on. So, uh, can't open the PID file, operations not permitted, so let's go ahead and give it permission to do that. So we're going to go back in to our edit. We're going to come down here, and we are going to give it the PID file equals, and then we're going to give it the path. So run slash engine x, and then slash uh, engine x dot PID. We're going to save that. Uh, reload it, and then we're going to start it one more time and see if we get an error. Ooh, and it started right up. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, let's just do this. Status. And I don't see any errors in the tell of it. Shows that it's active and running. That's great. So let's go ahead and use our PS AUX. We're going to grep for NGINX. engine x and now we can see that our master process is also running as the www hyphen data user removing engine x's ability to run as the root user greatly increases our security but let's go ahead and bring it a little bit further so let's hop back into that edit we're going to add a couple more options so the next one we're going to add is the no new privileges And then that's equal to true. And this is going to deny the process the ability to gain any new privileges, including any of its sub-processes through, through using SUID or um, set GUID binaries such as sudo um, or su. So we're going to set that as true. And then the next one we're going to do is we're going to do lock personality. And that's going to be equal to true. And this disables the personality system call, um, which might have security bugs in it. So we're going to go ahead and deny that. The next one we're going to do is kind of similar. We're going to do a system call filter. And then we're going to have that equal to at. And since it's denoted as an at, it's actually a group of system calls. And this is provided to us by uh, system D, and you can take a look and see what system calls are in it in the man file that I showed you earlier. So it's going to be at system service, and this only allows very common um, uh, service related system calls. And then since we put this one in, we're also going to want to put in a system call error number. So instead of killing the process if it calls, um, if it makes a system call that it's not allowed to, instead it'll just return an error. So we're going to type in system call error number, and then this is going to be equal to E P E R M. 
We're going to save it, and then we're going to restart the service again. Take a look, and we don't have any issues with it. Excellent. Now that the user and the system calls are locked down, let's go ahead and lock down the file system a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and jump back into our edit. We're going to come down to the bottom. So the first option we're going to put in is private temp. So your temp file is a world readable and writable directory, and you actually have two of them, one in slash temp and one in slash var temp. And the reason this is important to lock down is because all processes can read and write to that. So if one process writes to it and it incorrectly sets the uh, write and read permissions on that file, then another process will be able to modify it. So by putting in the private temp, this basically shows the temp file as empty because it mounts it under a private namespace for that process. So we're going to go ahead and enter this. So we're going to do private temp, and then this is equal to yes. The next one we're going to do is protect system. And what protect system does, it has three options. It has uh, true, it has full, and it has strict. So if it's set to uh, true, then it's going to mount the user and slash boot as read only. So you cannot modify anything in it. If it's set to full, then also the Etsy file is set to read only. And if it's set to strict, it's going to be the entire uh, operating system, the entire file system, with the exception of just a couple, um, which I don't have memorized. You can check the man page for that. So for us, we're going to set it to full. So we're going to do protect system and then equals full. And then the last one we're going to do is protect home. And what this is going to do is similar to the uh, private temp. It's going to mount slash home under its own namespace. That way, it always appears empty to the, to the service. So we're going to put in protect home and then equal to yes. And then we're going to write it. And then we're going to restart again. And then we'll check the status, and there's no errors. So for all the hate that systemd gets, it does actually make it very easy to sandbox applications with it. And this is the process that you'll go through for sandboxing. You'll have to change one thing, check the logs, change another thing, check the logs. And it does take a little troubleshooting to get it to work. But once you get it to work, you can generally copy and paste that configuration. So this Nginx configuration that I made will most likely work for any other Nginx service that's running on the same operating system. Them. But the big thing to remember that when you're working on this is to always check the journal CTL if you're having any issues with it. Because if you read through here and you see an error or if something's not working, it will almost always tell you exactly what's wrong in here. And like always, if you found this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you.